Okay, that's it. So we can we can get started. I think the, the first basic question is when you joined see it, uh, who invited you in and um, what were your responsibilities in the beginning? Oh, okay. Well, um, I was working at Mills College uh, when David was, and mm -hmm. David and I met at uh, UCSD um, maybe 1986, and uh, he came to play in one of our festivals, uh, and I helped him a lot with the setup, and so he remem remembered that. He met me then, and, uh, a and when I interviewed later at Mills College, uh, I mean, it it was quite a good interview and worked there for what um six years was it something like that yeah so I worked at Mills College for six years but then Mills was having problems financially as it always is and uh you know so a number of people took off uh, David went over to CalArts and uh a year later he called me up and asked if I would be the technical director there or I think it was that was the position. Um, and I was also asked to teach classes there at the same time. So so I said yes. And uh, I was there in 93, I believe, um, as the technical director. Uh, and I taught the studio classes, electronic music classes, whatever class I could invent, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, then um, the Northridge earthquake happened maybe three months after I started working there. So the studios were entirely ripped apart, uh, the Seat Studios. Um, it, that is, a, tons of stuff just fell on the ground and broke and wires got pulled out of the walls, et cetera. And so when we um, returned to the building, we got a nice grant from FEMA to rebuild the studios. And so we set about building the studios in a much, at that point, I mean, a much more contemporary to the time with digital equipment and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I was, you know, I was teaching classes also in charge of rebuilding the studios and making it, you know, bringing it up to date. Um, we had uh, at that point, I mean, the studios have changed a bit, but they're the same rooms, uh, but we had one room that was oriented towards learning how to record and do post-production. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had another room, which was uh, all about synthesis and interactive music. And this is where Mort would teach a lot of his classes and David would teach in that room as well. And when I taught synthesis, I used that class as well. Um, and then there was a another studio that was oriented around undergraduate synthesis education and Barry Schrader usually taught there. And then finally, there was a room oriented around real time use of instruments with electronics. And so people who are doing like uh, piano and electronics or guitar and electronics, or, you know, would work in that room to work with, you know, pianists who were wanting to integrate that into their work. And David taught in there, Stuart Fox, a few other people. Um, so that's how it was at Sea at Times. We had these studios and we moved back and forth through the studios. And, um, you know, that was pretty free how you would use them. Uh, it wasn't yeah everyone was pretty friendly so it wasn't like anyone was ever getting in anyone's way um but yeah it was a good time and it's surprisingly after or even during and after the during the recovery from the earthquake and after the earthquake we kept a lot of students there you know we were still quite we were doing quite well i think um yeah um more than I think he, he said that maybe it's because the center had a more loose kind of structure that they didn't really have a space. And that was part of the reason why uh, see it had the performances at Electronic Cafe, but maybe he was referring just to sort of kind of perform performance activities and less to. Yeah, well, see it was, I mean, what's the first word center <laughs> yes center. yeah and uh it was not really centered uh it was loosely associated with the studios at cal arts and it really was about the activities of the people who wanted to be a part of see it you know and so um there were concerts in different locations that were see it concerts 
including the electronic cafe. Uh, Mart wanted to do telematic type uh, performances and he needed a place which had uh, ISDN connections so he could actually do that. We didn't have such good connections at CalArts at the time. Uh, so, you know, we needed the electronic cafe. Uh, and also we did do uh, see it festivals um, at CalArts which were, you know, music festivals with, uh, you know, lots of invited performers, but we'd also, we just mix student works with uh, professional works and, you know, local composers. And it was a nice way for everyone to get involved and sort of students bring their stuff up to snuff so they could be along, you know, more experienced performers and, uh, you know, also get seen. But when uh, Red Cat opened, we moved the Sea Festival over to Red Cat because it was obvious we wanted more exposure. I mean, yes, we would occasionally get someone from the LA Times to come out to uh, Cal Arts, you know, but th that was always a little bit difficult, even though we we're only 25 minutes away, you know. Uh, so once we were able to do that at Red Cat, it was much different. And when was the first seed festival? Because giving a bit of background, I didn't really hear from neither David nor Morton about the festival. So I assume uh, the festivals were uh, happening sometime at a later yeah, point. Yeah, it, it was um, it, it was Clay Chaplin and myself that started it. Uh, and I don't know when the first one was. I I, I tried to open up my CalArts files, and I found they're all in Claris Works in this old uh, word processor format. So I have to search for a word processor that can, uh, you know, look at those old files. But um, I do see, um, I let's see, there's the call for the See It Festival in 2003. Um, and what else do I see here about the See It Festival? Um, there's a budget. Now, it could... Uh, what is this? See It For. Um, it could be the fourth festival. Um, well, let's see if I can look at it. Um, Okay, so I think the fourth festival was in 2003. Oh, no, this was on campus. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this will take a little bit of research, and I got to get a, a program that properly opens these files. Well, that's something. Um, I think, yeah. But yeah, you you know, Mort may not know what we were doing as see it he, we may not know of what he did as see it because it was very loose and it was also a place for us to um we we used it uh for grants as well so people would start up projects and say okay i want a grant and we're doing it as part of see it and then we put see its name on it but it was very loose yeah, I have some questions regarding that as well um yeah i think on the web i saw and maybe on the library, on the Colors Library website, a couple of records for where the Sea It Festival is taking place in early 2000s. And I think there was one or a couple maybe in late 2000s and early 2010s. And I have a suspicion because I think in 2011, David was some, engaged in some project related to Xenakis with Mocha. And I think there was some overlap, or maybe they used whatever the name, the umbrella see it still for some purposes. So it's yeah. it's really hard to date when it actually when it ended to, to exist as the kind of uh, I don't know this community. Yeah, story. yeah. I think after the two, I mean, after we did the festival at Red Cat, um, it the next year. Uh, you know, we got so much press or enough good press that uh, people other than the founders got interested. And so the festival uh, sort of lost its student, you know, and local, and it became a bigger thing. They wanted the Seed Festival to be this, you know, all professional sort of thing. Uh, and so at that point, um, we we started a student festival and uh, that's 
went on until the pandemic, uh, which it it was named at a certain point. We did get a name after a certain point, and then it was called the California Electronic Music Exchange Concerts, and it was uh, it it was oriented totally around student work. And we would, you know, we would, from our various institutions, we would, uh, you know, get the students together. And so all this, we would get together all the universities we could think of in California that had an electronic music program. So like UCSB, uh, Santa Cruz, uh, Stanford, Mills College, and, you know, UC Irvine, whoever had a program that was interested. And we would then... Um, everyone would submit works. So all the students from all the different uh, schools would submit works. And then the students at each institution would then be the curatorial body uh, with, with the suggestion that you should try to get people from a lot of people from other places. Don't, don't just curate your own thing, make it, make it a mix. And uh, that went on for several years. Um, but yeah, again, I would have, you know, we, Clay and I usually started doing it. And then when it came to the pandemic, I was like, oh, let's do, let's do a virtual one. Let's do it over. The, and Clay said, no, no one wants to do that. And he's totally against it. It didn't happen, but uh, we'll probably start it up again. Yeah, I, I saw some announcement, I think, um, yeah, that Clay published um, about something forthcoming. Anyway, um did you participate or, um, I don't know, contributed uh, or had a chance to attend the events at Electronic Cafe? Oh, yeah, I was at uh, I was at one of them um, and I was helping uh, get the uh, the network connections working, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, this was one where. Um, there was uh, Alvin Lucier did a uh, solo for percussion uh, with the percussion in the electronic cafe and Alvin back East. Um, and, uh, and then I also participated in one where I was at the remote location in New York and um, helped them get things working there. So, oh. so I, just ha I just happened to be in New York and they were doing a see it thing. And so I dropped by at, at, at the kitchen and, or was it the kitchen? Um, I yeah. forget which studio it was. I, you know, people asked me to come by. I helped get the electronics working, uh, but they spent all the time trying to get the electronics working and not enough time rehearsing, uh, but that's how it goes. Yeah, so you were part apparently of those most, um, I don't know, famous, uh, well-captured events. I think that the first, uh, one you're referring to is 94, the um, telecommunication, uh, teleconcert. I I had a chance uh, like a week ago to watch the entire recording with Q&A, uh, like about two hours. It's it's kept in the Getty archive. Yeah, so I got the, the, sense, the sense of it. Um, yeah, at, uh, at the kitchen, that that is where Morton and Mark as well mm -hmm. also santa fe and santa monica uh, electronic cafe um yeah and and another one i think is the um, 25th anniversary of the institution when i i was inquiring about this um obi performance of david at lacma and that concert took place at lacma and the performance of alvin i think morton and maybe someone else took place at electronic cafe so that should be part of that yeah 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 but i was always i was always trying to do my own research while i was at cal arts so i was always careful not to help people too much you know because you know not only do i i mean i work at building instruments and building software for electronic music um and that's the most important thing to me but i'm also a really good uh, sound engineer and technician so i have to be very careful not to do that uh because mort and david really well especially mort likes to have people there as his assistants and he would just suck me in i know uh so i would i would come to the electronic cafe to help out 
but I would never say I was helping out. I would just be there in case they were having a problem they couldn't solve. And I would, you know, join, join Mark or whoever on the, on the sort of brainstorming how to fix it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Could you recollect some of the innovations that see it produced during your time as a member? Um, yeah, I mean, things that see it, I mean, it was mostly those concerts, I think, were the most interesting things. Uh, I had a grant from Sun Microsystems as part of See It, um, but we ended up with, it was one of those experiments that had negative results. Uh, we were trying to build a, a electronic music toolkit with Java. Mm -hmm. with the java language and it was me and mark trail were working on that and it just we found that java slowed down at that point in the history of java it would slow down as your programs got bigger so we found we couldn't get anything sophisticated running now it's changed very it's very different now java is now a much faster language but back then you so that was that was not really an innovation, but it was us working on something and realizing, okay, that's that's not going to work. Um, but I developed a lot of the SoundTac uh, software uh, while while at See It, um, though I never needed any support. Uh, I just worked on that and released it through CalArts servers. Um, yeah. Um... I, I think those that are, it, it, it's important to actually know that the, sto the stories of failure, again, to whatever yeah. learn about them, to, to recognize and uh, and not just to pay attention to those celebrated um, um, offshots. Yeah, I, I, I think those kind of innovations I'm aware about, it was, of course, Interactor and, and, and Media Dancer and I'm not sure to which degree it was affiliated with See It, but I think because it was loose, um, then it was somewhat ascribed. Well, the harmonic tone generator that David was developing, I think, in, uh, in early 90s. Was Mark Trail working on um, anything kind of innovative? I mean, Mark was working on music and um, developing ways of doing improvisation. Uh, when when he came to CalArts, he was then a member of The Hub, uh, which was a network music ensemble that started at uh, the Center for Contemporary Music uh, at Mills College. Mm -hmm. And what they found, here's another story of failure. They found that uh, in the early 90s, when the internet became more prevalent, the idea of network music suddenly went from being an interesting strategy, uh, which is what they used it as in the 70s and 80s, uh, to it became like more of a gimmick. Uh, so their, their pieces with network music were always performed on stage with all the members there on stage. And they connected their machines and they would pass musical messages to each other through from computer to computer. So they would, um, maybe they would construct a game piece where challenges or different uh, things would change during the piece, or they might have just a central hub of information, or they would all run off the same program that came from one of the people, you know, so it was an idea of uh, interaction, both between the players, but also between the instruments, you know, sort of this interesting form. And so made for these really interesting concerts. There were times when, I mean, they, that was the first time I saw a bunch of computer musicians look like they weren't doing anything at all. Uh, and suddenly this sophisticated music was coming out because they would leave, they would set things up and let them go, right? It would become a generative piece. Uh, uh, but then they would then they would get involved, you know, and it, it, would, it would always had an interesting form when the internet came about and a lot of them got separated at different uh, institutions they thought let's do the hub remotely and they found that that became a gimmick you know that they were doing it over the internet 
that it, it sort of lacked its it wasn't about the music anymore you know the network didn't add anything to music but it, it sort of became more of a spectacle and detracted from the music uh so the the hub became no more uh but mark made a transition at that point towards more of a solo performer and a solo live performer and his work with uh improvising with leo smith i think was some of the most interesting mm -hmm. stuff he was doing at that point that's just my point of view though yeah so i mean it was sort of like david's stuff with challenge it was this really interesting you know improvisation between live performer and between the electronics and the uh you know the melody uh morphine stuff that david was doing where he would you know he would track the melodies of the other players and then you know do contour analysis of it and then morph into other forms um and bring those things back later in the piece you know or in the improvisation wow. um i think another uh project that time wise sort of corresponds um corresponds um the context of discussion is this cage exhibition um that david was largely a part of uh so i'm 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 wondering, were you assisting uh, with it? No, I didn't. I didn't help David with that one. I, I don't remember what year that was, but yeah, that one I didn't get involved in. Okay. Yeah, I I, I also struggled to to figure out whether whether it's, it was just formally affiliated as 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 long as David was uh, engaged, or there was some there were other members of the C involved because it doesn't look like that. And yeah, I mean, usually. I mean, usually David or Mart or myself, we would ask students if they wanted to help and the students would get involved. Those are the first people generally. Um, but yeah, I, I went to the reception. I chatted with Merce. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good concerts, you know. Yeah. Well, so time wise, it was um, 93, 95, and there were three exhibitions that were traveling. There is a huge pile of documentation in the archive of, um, of David that is just very, very hard to, to, to process and to make sense of just intellectually. Yeah, um, if it was, if that happened in LA in 94 and 95, that would have been right after the earthquake. So I was mm -hmm. probably quite busy trying to keep things together at CalArts. Uh, we moved into a, a Lockheed research facility our our all of our classes so we were we had i had to move the whole studio into this military facility and uh we were all the students were going into this military encampment every day to take their music experimental music classes and the guards would say okay you don't go beyond there or you might be shot you know <laughs> stay within these confines you know it's really quite weird uh but yeah they had all these abandoned buildings up near valencia that uh we were able to use while ours were you know being repaired and yeah i had to be there for all the repair and supervising that and yeah it was i think that's an amazing case for some kind of anthropological study the sense of uh, place and speciality or whatever. <laughs> yeah um yeah so um yeah, how this convergence of uh, art and technology was received at CalArts, were you supported um, outside of the School of Music, just on the level of community and, and, and reception? Oh, um, how was I, was I supported? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was just doing research and uh, I was, this was, you know, this was the mid 90s to the early aughts. And so it was the start of the internet. And my interest at that point was to try to create internet communities and to have people distributing their creations through the internet. And so uh, we, you know, we put it together web servers as soon as it was possible to make a web server. You mm -hmm. know, we were try right on the edge of, you know, getting, getting online and, uh, distributing software and we started uh several email groups 
that had a lot of, you know, sort of international, you know, crazy electronic music people uh, on. Uh, and so we started one that still exists is the music DSP uh, list, which is a listserv, which is all about people who are using signal processing, but uh, using it to make music. Uh, before music got to a certain point, most of the research around signal processing centered around military needs, you know, like uh, sonar and this kind of thing. So we we decided we would make a distinct area for people working in music and talking about uh, their techniques. Uh, so that was a big uh, group. And uh, Douglas Rapetto, who after after he, he he helped set it up when he was a grad student, he went on to be the studio director at Dartmouth. And then after that, he was a professor at Columbia in New York. Uh, and now he's retired in Kansas. Um, but uh, he he was the person who was instrumental in creating that group. I mean, I created other discussion groups, which were just free and open. Anyone says anything. And we had a lot of sort of prankster uh, electronic musicians on them that would uh, rip each other apart for, you know, I don't know, being part of uh, the bourgeois capitalist society or whatever, you know. <laughs> we had one person um, who I still don't know who it is named after a Dostoevsky novel, uh, Nitochka Nezvinova. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and she or he basically terrorized many of the electronic musician people, especially when they showed signs of uh, being supported by privilege or, you know, privileged uh, standing at an institution. Um, so it was kind of a healthy, fun, and anarchic time, just starting, things starting up on the internet. And that I was supported in, uh, you know, CalArts bought me computers, helped us, I helped them set up the, the network. They didn't really have a network in the building, uh, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I heard about it, that the CalArts had, um, well, faculty people got their email addresses pretty pretty late. I think it was later than at Mills, for example. Because yeah, yeah. Strange. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, and, but it was still the same thing. You would like uh, connect over a phone line to another building, you know, so it was a place in the center of Mills where they had a mainframe and uh -huh. you would log into that. And Mills, you had all your computers at uh, in the music building, but they weren't really connected to the Internet. Um, the same thing at CalArts. I'm mm -hmm. sure it was the same most everywhere. Well, yeah, but I think I I'm gravitating a bit to that area, and I and I don't want to really frame your response with which uh, <laughs> which I think I cannot avoid. Uh, so again, Cal Arts presents itself as as I mean it's it's an art institution. So I'm wondering whether there was at any point a kind of resistance to technological sort of interventions. Uh, whether there were kind of communities, groups of people who, I don't know, advocated for whatever the pure pure art that we are not a research institution and 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 things like that. Mm -hmm. um, were there such sentiments at all? Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, there was still a notion that. Uh, technology there's a lot of optimism around technology i think the internet uh as it developed that turned around uh and it became negative uh but the idea of people doing electronic music uh that was always supported even even if there was a, a negative feeling about technology um and generally uh People liked each other at CalArts. I mean, I've rarely saw an argument. I'd say the the one thing everyone had at CalArts was autonomy. You know, everyone, you weren't like, 
like here at UCSD, you're placed in either the composition faculty or the performance faculty, and you're expected to support these areas. Uh, at CalArts, it was much more like every faculty who arrived was their own area, you know, and it, there was not so much fighting. And I would be teaching a computer music student about interaction and how to make uh, a performance system maybe. But if I thought he was needed some help with composition, uh, I would I would ask one of the composers like Mike Fink or Lucky Moscow to could you meet with this student and give him a hand? You know, he his ideas are not need need some uh, you know help here. And they were always willing to do that. And we were always willing to take on anyone who wanted to do things with technology. So it was pretty, everyone was pretty generous, but I think it was also because everyone had a lot of independence. Um, people did not really get jealous of the facilities because everyone who was serious about music would try to play outside of CalArts. You know, so there wasn't a fight to like, oh, we want to use this concert. We want your your stage or, you know, music had a terrible little concert hall. They still do, <laughs> uh, you know. Well, now they have the Beast and that's much different. But then it was just the, the uh, Royal Disney Theater. Uh, and that was just too small, you know. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I... Um... Not much to be jealous about. Uh, yeah, and I mean, the I would also I was also a good recording engineer, so I'd end up working a lot with the acoustic musicians, and they found soon that I was the best person to have there for you know to record their pieces. But they were usually doing contemporary music, so they weren't so alien to electronics either. Yeah, I think. Well, part of the reason I, I'm asking in addition to sort of. Uh, no, just my, my experience of interacting with a couple of people from Morton, I think, uh, from Morton, but it's related to early 90s. I, um, he, he said that on the level of whatever administrators, decision makers, uh, barely there was a, a sort of resistance and well, he met support with, with David, from David who got the thing and had an administ administrative position but that that yes that that there was a certain resistance and from david as well um i think part of it was related to the current situation but also um but also at some point i was i was asking him like there was this santa and um you had a kind of inclination i don't know it's not that it was a reproducing or guided by the ideas of groups like um, AAT, Experiments in Art and Technology, uh, but kind of this um, co collectives groups that are supporting convergence and interaction of people of different backgrounds. Uh, I was asking why uh, there was like no effort to develop collaboration with Caltech. Um, oh. And yeah, he, he, he referred the there was kind of several efforts and none of them resulted in success. Well, maybe because of issues on on both sides, but yeah, it's it's well, I could I could say there's at UCSD it's really clear. Um we have just amazing engineers here. And they are doing, you know, cutting edge stuff all over the place. But um to ask them to work with music. Uh, I mean, I was doing, I was trying to do analysis of uh, John Cage piece, Williams mix. And uh, I had the, you know, 192 page graphic score, which was a lot of data. You know, it's basically every page is, uh, you know, what, um, two thirds of a second. Mm -hmm. So to, and there, and there were like, uh, you know, 16 lines on each page. So getting all that information off of the paper and into data was very difficult. So I, I said, oh, well, I'll talk to the graphics people, computer graphics people. And they were interested in talking. I said, how could, could you like look at the score and just identify all the shapes and, re you know, get something which gives me the shape of each polygon on there and also reads the text. And they said, oh yeah, we can do all that stuff. But 
when they gave me someone to work on it, it was a grad student who barely had time to do it and was just starting out. And, uh, well, and I realized the problem is that they get so much funding from so many places to do research that when it comes to music, we don't have any money. We don't have any funding yeah. and no one's going to give us funding unless they want to do something charitable, you know? So it's, uh, very difficult. Um, so partnerships with other, with technological, you know, parts of the university is difficult. I can understand that uh, a collaboration with Caltech wouldn't work unless there was a professor or researcher who had a personal interest in music and wanted to do that and, you know, sponsor that activity. Um, but it has to be someone who's dedicated to music. So I'm a computer science graduate who decided to go into music education. And it's because this is what I enjoy doing. Um, and I always find it easier to work without funding because mm -hmm. with funding, you always have a commitment to do something. Yeah. And when you don't have funding, you can experiment yeah. and you find much better things when you're experimenting, I think. Yeah. That, that's an amazing perspective. I wish more people shared it. Um, were you aware or involved anyhow in the development? Well, it's it's not really a big thing, but the Mars proposal that I've shared of um, 98? Yeah, that sounds about right. I went to a few meetings, but uh, I was not involved. It seemed Mort wanted to, and David wanted to work on that mostly. Um, I don't know, was Mort involved at all? No. Okay. No, okay. It was just David. Else. Just David then. Yeah. So I went to a few meetings and we ch we chatted about it, but I never got involved beyond that. Oh, could you tell a bit about those meetings? Because I it's really hard to contextualize um context. It was mostly David tell me about what was gonna happen. And you know, I had the idea of like, oh, could we put a microphone up there? <laughs> you know. Do we like listen to what's actually happening up there? And uh, I don't know if anything went anywhere. So, um, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't get involved beyond that. Yeah, I think, I think uh, the file I've shared it was recovered, uh, and there should be an original in the archive. Uh, that I mean, I, I I've been, I've encountered as a kind of weird artifact that outside of any context. And also have this daring, um, daring idea in in the passion. I think of early seventies when there was all kinds of um, in, in enthusiasm. And I think back in sixty nine, maybe David was he was either also making a proposal or writing it in in an article that he will be whatever the first composer on Mars. So it felt as as that kind of. <laughs> very weird res resurgence and I, I i was wondering like who could support that kind of idea in 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 90 in 98 but it didn't went anywhere but just just a kind of interesting artifact given given, given the time i don't know yeah 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 um, i don't know did it go anywhere after that no no apparently and i i mean i i don't know who engaged in the conversation i i could assume that maybe some Leonardo and um and Roger Molina and maybe it's yeah okay interesting that makes sense. Where, where the stimulus would <laughs> could, could come from anyway um so as as far as I understand at some point you began sort of directing see it see it at at which point you you took over and did you share kind of the whatever directing responsibilities with uh, other colleagues like Mark or Clay. Okay, I might have been I might have been director of C, <laughs> but I, I mean, see, it always is. And again, I, everything at Keller is very autonomous, mm -hmm. and so we didn't have funds to direct, but we would get students together to do activities and to support things. So. Uh, I would organize all, you know, enough people to help Mort in a concert or to help David in a concert or to have the students perform their own works. Or maybe we would have a class that was about how to use uh, 
different types of sensors and integrate that in their music. And then that might turn into a concert, which became a see it concert. And so, and then see it also became somewhat synonymous with the studios at that point. And so, um, and then yes, uh, me and Mark, uh, were definitely involved in that. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's not much more information. And the reason I'm a little hazy is at uh, around, um, when was it? I think it was around 2000, I had a sabbatical and so stayed away from CalArts for a year. And then when I came back, I was commuting from San Diego. So I was suddenly much less involved uh, with CalArts and going to the concerts and all that. I would come up for my classes. So my last three years at CalArts, I wasn't there as much um as i was the first seven years and since you have this kind of um unique timeline with uh with the with respect to the sea could you give a perspective how the sea at the early stage let's say associated with with the trio of mark morton and and david was different from sea at the later stage when um when Mark Trio, Clay Chaplin, and you got more involved. Oh, and and Sarah Roberts. Uh, uh -huh. I haven't heard much about her at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um we hired Sarah um to work with uh arts and technology and interaction and technology. And she's, you know, she's still an artist in Pasadena, still active. Mm -hmm. uh, but then she became the director of the, um, there was a, a sort of interdisciplinary institute for arts and technology that she was the director shortly, but she was always in the music department as a visual artist. Um, and, but, and she was involved in a lot of the performances and shows and et cetera. So she's, she's worth talking to. Um, but yeah, uh, when it was Mark and myself and Clay, um, it became more about uh, the students and visiting artists. And uh, it was less about projects from ourselves. It was more to foster engagement with the rest of the world. Um, and I think the Sea It Festival was the 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 most prominent thing that came out of that, those ideas. I mean, a lot of it was just we're up in we're up in Valencia. We need to uh, bring people in and we need to send people out. And we need to make sure our students are getting real exposure to both as players, performers, and with, uh, you know, people coming in to work with them. So that would also sponsor, uh, or I don't know, sponsor, we never had much money, uh, but we would invite people to be guest artists as much as we could, as much as we could convince people to just sleep on someone's couch and teach some classes. Yeah, that's the way it often happens. Yeah, uh, something I couldn't really... I don't know, figure out. So as as you said, with um with kind of science grants, um at the early stage, see it was was funded by ATT. So I've been wondering, but I couldn't get anything from Morton really, uh whether um whether the 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 people funding the see it supporting whether it anyhow influenced whatever the agenda the all these telecommunication ideas that they were sort of um, propelling. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, you'd have to talk to Mort or Mark about that because there's a, theirs was the telecommunication ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and David would know the most about the budgets through the years since he was present for all of them. Uh, and I do have to say that when that David was actually quite a uh, bridge between different areas of the music uh, department. So it could have been that before David came, that technology was somewhat antagonistic with acoustic music. But when David came as the chair, he showed himself to be so proficient as an acoustic musician, a composer, 
and an electronic musician that he sort of you know made peace be you know he was re well respected in all areas and so that that was you know really why he was chair for so many years is he could talk to everyone in the department and have their respect uh and he he sort of you know made the department one whole much more um but yeah uh i was not involved in much of the budget except for the uh the sun microsystems grant and also the um the grant to uh put put to network the building to network cal arts which was not a see it thing i was asked by uh the president's office to uh chair that so um but david would know everything else about the budget um but again concerts were done without very with very little budget at all yeah, not surprising. Um, is there anything uh, I missed to ask? Uh, any any events, names, dates uh, that? Yeah, I mean, you might you might contact Sarah Roberts uh, and uh, see what she has to say, um, what her perspective on see it is. Uh, mm -hmm. You've talked to Clay already. No, not yet. Okay, Clay Chaplin would be a good one to talk about mm -hmm. the see it festival. Um, he was a student uh, when it was started, and I believe it was he and Andrew Buxbarg that started the first one. And I was more of a faculty sponsor, mm -hmm. but uh, I tried to make sure it continued each year, you know. But Clay also did a bit of time uh, in Mark's role. Clay was assisting Mort. He was sort of Mort's assistant when he was a student, so he might have some perspective there. Nice. Uh, from from the slides I I shared um, again, I I told I, I showed them to to Morton, and I think we didn't really recollect much. But on on the first page, I can share the screen uh, just in case you you may know any context to that. There on the first page is Morton and and Tony Martin, and of course, well, Morton doesn't remember, and Tony Martin, I could I cannot ask him. Uh, uh, do you recall like any event in two thousand three happening with um, Morton and and Tony in association with See It or maybe? Um, I might if if I can open these files, maybe it'll say something about that. I do have a recollection, but I mean I've been to a few events where the uh, early um, sort of uh, San Francisco type music people got together. Mm -hmm. And it could have something to do with that. So I I may not remember which Tony Martin event this was, you know. Yeah. And I looked at the pictures. It was they're just such close stage pictures, you know. Yeah. They don't really show any context. Yeah, where where was this? Um I think there is no indication. That's like all the information I could get from uh from the library and archives at Colarts. Which yeah, I would tend to think that this was at Red Cat. I'm seeing if I recognize the tables or it might not be at CalArts, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and that the stage tables, yeah, it just doesn't look like CalArts, but it could be. Um, yeah, I would think maybe this is, yeah, I don't know. I would have to, I'll search through my own documents once I can open them. But I see I have very little in my CalArts archive here. So we'll see what I can pull out. Okay. Great. I mean, if you have the listing, at least I'll have the listings of some of the artists who played at the See It festivals, if that's helpful. That that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. Okay, I've got to go to something at noon. <laughs> So yeah, and I think we've got to pretty much the end. 